Well, hello everybody, it's Rob at PMDG, back with episode 7 of our 737 Small Bites. Airplane's still at Renton. Renton Scenery by Zavetsky Designs. It's a strong recommend from all of us. The focus for today is going to be on the navigation displays. Once again, we are going through the display options menu. At PMDG, we have incorporated many of the in-service changes that have been made to the 737 during its service life. We've added these in in the form of options, so if you would like to turn some of them on or off, you can do so. This short bike will take you through part of that process. Just a quick review in the very beginning. One of the things that some folks have asked about in the PMDG forum is whether these need to be saved, and the answer is no, they don't. Once you make the change in the menu, it automatically updates to the airplane and it will stick as long as that airplane remains installed. Once again, here on the flight deck of the 737, down to the FMS, click on the menu button, PMDG Setup. That will take you to the Setup main menu. We're going to focus on the aircraft portion here. Once we get into the aircraft menu, you'll see up on the top there is a menu item that contains the aircraft's registration number. I've also called that a tail number, but a registration number, tail number, same thing. You can see it painted here on the tail. That's how we do it here in the United States. Your country may vary. But any changes you make inside this menu structure are unique to this particular airplane and they will remain with it. In a future episode, we'll show you how to transfer changes that you make to other airframes if you wanted to make all the airplanes you fly function the same way. But if you go into the displays menu here, you'll see in the upper right corner there's nine pages. We're currently looking at page one of nine. The title here displays comma PFD because the first page is focused on the primary flight display. You can always tell what you're looking at by looking at the very top row here in the FMS that'll give you some information. And then you can use the page next and page previous keys to tab through those so that you can see what you've got available. So for example, we've got three pages of primary flight display. We've got a couple pages of navigation display. We're going to be focused on those today. And at the tail end, we've got some engine display stuff. We'll go through those in the next video in the series. So for now, let's focus on the navigation display. First item on the list is Track Up. This is an option that is airline selectable. It's not something you could change in flight. But some airlines like to have the current airplane track at the top of the nav display. Some airplanes like the magnetic heading. You can tell by reading at the very top there, it says heading mag. That means you're in a magnetic heading mode. If it says track like this, that means that you are in a track mode. So the aircraft track will be directly on top. If you're not sure why you would want to select those two differently, I recommend you keep it in track. That's what most Boeing airliners are like. There are a couple of European carriers that have them in magnetic, however. And if you want to tune the airplane to match whatever airline you're flying, you can do that right here. Next up, we've got the vertical situation display. This is probably one of the cooler tools on the 737. Here we are in flight, and I'll show you. You push this center button right here. Push that once, push it again twice, and voila. We now have our vertical situation display. You can see on this display that you have a vertical profile that will show you not only the surrounding terrain but it'll show you your vertical relationship to it so you can see there's a little delta widget there the white this right here this little widget right here that's your airplane this white horizontal line is your track vector and you can see this green here this is the vertical profile of the terrain ahead of the airplane you can also see a projection of your flight path and how it relates to that terrain. Now we're currently heading away from the approach that we're supposed to be flying, so you can see that it looks like it's going to go through terrain, but skipping ahead through the magic of editing. Here we are just about to turn final onto the RNAV to runway 34 in Renton. And you can 
See the aircraft's vector is pointed right down the approach slope so you know the airplane's intercepting the approach appropriately. You can also see that the fixes are laid out there with the altitudes that you expect to cross those fixes. You can see that FESLA is a to cross at because it's got the two arrows pointing toward each other. And then let me see if we can there you go. A little bit bigger for you. And you can see Warwick has got an arrow pointing up, and that's a 1100 or above. There's a couple of other little symbols in there that'll help you to maintain accuracy on the vertical profile as you're flying approach. But this is a really cool tool. Very, very helpful. Very useful for situational awareness. And of course, when you couple it with the terrain display, again, not radar, it's a terrain display, that'll show you the terrain around the airplane and give you increased confidence, especially when you're flying the airplane into mountainous terrain areas. So I recommend when you're out flying approaches, push that center button twice. That'll bring up your VSD. And if you want to fly an older style airplane that doesn't have all that data stuff, you can just tap the VSD button here in the nav display page and turn it off. All right, range arcs. This one's fairly self-explanatory, but for those who are new to glass cockpit airliners, like many of our DC-6 pilots, I'll point this out to you here. You can see on the navigation display these range arcs here. Those are designed to help you get a sense of scale so you can see the distance things are from your airplane. You can turn those range arcs off if you like. Some airlines don't have them, some airlines do. You can set yours up however you like. Next up we have the Show Next Altitude Constraint button. This couples with the display of your lateral path on the navigation display, and it will show you the altitude of the, the next fix that you're going to be crossing. So, for example, here's a little bit earlier in that approach that I showed you with the vertical situation display. It's got the altitude listed on it. I can turn that off, and now you'll notice the altitude of the fix is gone. We can turn it back on, and that altitude will come back. The last item on this page, the VOR course lines, that's a selector to describe whether or not you want the FMS to draw VOR course lines on the display during approaches in which it's appropriate for you to see them. Okay, moving on to the next page, we've got minimum runway length, and this is a airline selectable option. It's not something the crew controls. Your airline and your insurance company decides what you're going to see here. But you'll notice that we've got it set to 5,000 feet here. And what that means is if we push the airport display button right here, we'll be able to see little symbols for surrounding airports on the navigation display. And what this is telling us is that it's only showing us airports with runways greater than 5,000 feet. Now, we've got Bremerton over here to the left, and it's been a while since I've been up that way, but I think Bremerton's a 6,000 foot runway, maybe 6,200 feet. So we're going to filter it off. We're going to put in 6,500 feet as our minimum. We're going to say that our insurance company doesn't trust us, so they want us on a 6,500 foot runway, and you'll notice poor little Bremerton went away. So that's a good way to filter data. You can, if you can find out what the filtering limit is for the favorite airline that you fly, you can set that to match. Most air carriers use either 4,500 feet or 5,000 feet for the 737, and that will then cause the display to show you any airfields with runways greater than that number. On line two, we are looking at TCAS range rings. So first, let's make sure we've got TCAS being displayed, and you get that by pushing the traffic button there in the center of the range knob. And you can see that we've got, well, I'll have to get in a little bit closer here, but you'll see that we've got a little ring around, drawn around our airplane on the navigation display. And you can see it in the form of little dots there. I turned them off, and I'll turn them back on again. And they're back. Let me zoom in here a little bit closer so that you can see them. But these dots provide a three nautical mile range reference. So fair traffic control calls out to you and says you've got traffic at your one o'clock, two and a half miles. By having those little dots, see the circular dots there, that, uh, that group of circles right there, that gives you a clear idea of where the three mile mark is so you can expect to see them within that, or her I suppose. 
um, but you can expect to, to use that as a visual range reference if you've got traffic on the TCAS on the display you'll be able to see that. Now speaking of seeing traffic on TCAS, in modern airliners we try to keep the display clutter to a minimum so TCAS generally is not going to show you anything that's not important to you. Now some people like to have all the surrounding traffic available for them to see so if you select this line three here to show all it's going to clutter this entire display full of airplanes when you're in a high traffic environment. If you're like me and you like to keep the information minimalist, I only want to know about threats, you can use set this to filter and then use these two settings here, both range and altitude separation. They're currently set accurately for the 737 airplanes, so you can just leave those alone and you'll get an accurate presentation. It will only show you traffic that it feels warrants your attention because it may present a, an awareness hazard. All right, that covers all the customizations for the navigation displays. Up next, episode 8, we're going to talk about the engine and system displays. Until then, be well. We'll see you soon.